Speculation. When your opponent asks a witness what was the doctor thinking or what was the victim was the victim happy, your response should be objection, calls for speculation. To use this objection effectively, however, you need to be on your toes because questions of this kind come out of nowhere and, before you know it, the witness has told us what someone else was thinking or feeling, contrary to the rules. The only person who can tell the court what someone was thinking or feeling is the person who was doing the thinking or feeling, not someone else. Every such question deserves your response. Objection. Objection. Calls for speculation. This is perhaps the hardest question to catch because it can be woven into a complex witness examination in ways that may fail to arouse your suspicions. As with all objections, you must li uh, listen attentively and be prepared to object before the testimony is uttered. What's the basis? Competence. Who knows what you are thinking other than yourself? No one. Who knows if you are happy or sad? You all, you or someone looking at you, no one. A person's state, uh, state of mind or emotion may be uh, guessed at from the look on their face or from the things they say or do, but the true thoughts and feeling behind the face are, are known only to the soul within the maker who watches from on high not some witness in a box. Lawsuits are, or should be, a search for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All such questions are objectionable on the grounds they call for speculation. The only way someone can say what you, you or anyone else might have been thinking at a particular time is to uh, speculate, i.e. to guess. Guessing isn't evidence. Just because someone is smiling doesn't mean that they are happy. Just because someone isn't smiling doesn't mean that they are not happy. Actors on stage, on screen, smile brightly with uh, mouthfuls of uh, blindingly shiny white teeth when they are miserable inside. Worry about some... Uh, worrying about... <laughs> Worrying about some happening at home or whether they, they'll have a job next week. Other, others frown with the most uh, despondent gloom imaginable on their face when they are secretly joyful and perfectly elated with their lives. See this face? It's a happy motherfucking face. The smile or frown on a person's face does not necessarily reflect the feeling in their heart, nor do their actions or things they may say in public. Since a witness on the stand at a hearing or a trial or at deposition can only testify to the facts about uh, which, uh, which the witness has firsthand knowledge, it may be uh, proper to ask, was the victim smiling? That requires no supernatural inquiry into the inner workings of a person's heart or mind. A smile is a smile, though, of course, they come in many flavors. But to ask a witness what someone else is feeling at a particular time is to ask a question that good judges will not allow if you object in a timely manner. Similarly, no witnesses can testify as to what someone else may or may not have been thinking at a particular time. However, this will happen in your case. Frequently, the problem for you is that it will come in a surprisingly insidious form, seldom outright and in the open. The opposing lawyer will sneak the question in on you when you are least likely to catch it, and if you aren't quick enough with the, your objection, the witness will answer in ways you don't want. Whether it's ignorance or the rules on the other side's part of intentional trickery to unjustly influence the court, you should never allow such answers to be given unless they favor your side of the dispute. Witnesses should only be allowed to testify to, that, uh, to what they feel, what they know. The question uh, presented by your opponent will be cleverly phrased, to catch you off guard. For example, consider the following. When the doctor snapped off his rubber gloves angrily after the operation and tossed them disgustingly into the trash, uh, into the trash, what was his attitude? 
as you stood there by the side of the road, watching people uh, gather to gaze in wonder at the horrible, bloody carnage, what was the atmosphere? At any time during the attack on the golf course that day, did you feel your assailant was trying to prove a point by striking you with his nine iron? See what I mean? None of these directly ask what someone was thinking or feeling, yet each and every one of them is objectionable because they require the witness to speculate. It is impossible for the witness to know firsthand what the doctor's attitude was or what the people in the crowd were thinking or feeling or what might have been in the mind of the club uh, wielding golfer. Only the doctor, the crowd, and the golfer can answer these types of uh, questions. Competence. Remember, no one is competent to testify about facts beyond his or her own personal first-hand knowledge. Yet failure to object will cause two problems. First, the testimony will be heard. Second, you won't be able to object on appeal if you don't object when it happens. Um, when it happens, nor is objecting afterwards and asking the judge to strike the testimony going to do much to repair the damage. As we've said again and again, once once judge and or jury hear testimony, it is sheer folly to imagine they can erase the memory. For a judge to instruct the jury to disregard the last answer can serve only to underscore the words in their minds so they'll stand out more during, uh, more during deliberation than they would have if you just let the testimony slip by. The problem with letting such testimony slip by is that unless you make a timely objection, you will not be allowed to complain to the appellate court later that unwarranted words should not have been allowed. Appellate justices are not psychics. They, they know only what the printed record tells them. Fail to object, and you lose your, powerful, uh, your power for appeal. When the opposition asks a witness, when did, a, uh, when did the driver first decide to turn down the unpaved highway, stand immediately to your feet, even before you, uh, you reach your full height, Blurt out quickly, objection calls for speculation. The witness lacks competence to testify when another person decided anything. It could have been mere seconds before turning the, uh, the steering wheel or months earlier. Only the driver knows, and on only the driver can testify as to the time of his own decisions. Don't allow the opposition to pollute the record of your lawsuit with testimony that lacks competence. Testimony, uh, testimony that calls for speculation lacks competence. Object immediately.